Good day everyone, I'm Sophia Angel Inado together with my group mates Jan Paul Alessio and Joan Fernandez. So today we will discuss about our topic which is the chapter 8, gender interest and need. So the objectives of our topic are identify the difference between gender interest and needs, give examples of gender needs and how policy can be made responsive to these needs, and discover your own strategic and practical needs. So we have three subtopics, gender interest, gender interest and need in development, and challenges for the fulfillment of gender needs in the Philippines. So the first subtopic will be discussed to us by Mr. John Paul Alexei. Good day everyone, I'll be discussing the gender interest and needs. Many people believe that all people of the same sex have the same gender interest because they share similar biological characteristics. This view discounts women's socialized gender roles. Interest those men or women develop by virtue of their social positioning through gender attributes. Gender interest are preferred to use the phrase gender interest over women's interest because the latter tends to focus on the generic notion of women based on their biological similarities. Next topic is gender needs. All gender interests are essential in gender analysis. This interest should be translated into needs in gender planning. Gender needs are, have two types. Practical gender needs in terms of planning are not necessarily feminist and content. These are concerned with women's immediate needs for survival like nutrition, living conditions, healthcare, and employment. Women's needs as mothers and wives about their socially imposed roles in society. Women's practical gender demands frequently involve their position as vital reproductive agents in the home. Unequal gender, division of labor and the structure that support unequal gender relations are not sufficiently challenged by merely addressing practical gender needs. Dealing with suitable gender needs alone will not transform social structures and processes. Strategic gender needs are needs that women identify because of their subordinate position to men in their society. By identifying strategic gender needs and practical gender needs, policymakers can attain strategic gender interests such as gender equality, empowerment, and equality. With this knowledge, gender policies and plans can be formulated and the tools and techniques for implementing them can be identified. The next topic will be discussed by Ms. By Ms. Joan Fernandez. We will discuss the gender and needs in development. Empowerment of women is needed lalo na sa mga mahirap when women are empowered mas nakaka-contribute sila sa community, economic growth, and to overall development. In Caroline Moser's framework in gender planning and development, ay dalawang types ng woman needs which is the practical and strategic. Ang practical needs ay for example malinis na tubig, healthcare, at edukasyon, or yung mga kailangan para mabuhay sa araw-araw. And the strategic needs are more on long term, it includes issues na related sa power, or ang status ng isang babae sa lipunan. Itong framework ni Mosers ang tumulong para i-priority at i-address ang strategic and practical needs of women, especially sa mga mahirap. Development plans and policies have historically tended to view women as a homogeneous group or magkakatulad assuming na pareho ang pangangailangan nila at experience. But these views fail to see the diversity or pagkakaiba-iba ng mga kababaihan in terms of politics and the social, economic, and cultural backgrounds. Kaya isinabatas ang gender and development and the Magna Carta of Women. Gender and development, GAD ensure that the government pursue gender equality in all aspects of the development na kahit mapapabae man o lalaki ay pwedeng makabinipit sa development na ito. While ang Magna Carta of Women, ito ang batas na ang mga kababaihan lang ang nakakabinipit at sex to eliminate, to eliminate discrimination na naranasan ng mga kababaihan at protects women, recognize them, and promote their rights. The next topic will be discussed by Sofia Inato. Challenges for the fulfillment of gender needs in the Philippines. So generally, yung main challenge dito is kadalasan mas nagiging focus yung mga batas na pinapatupad sa babae lang. Dito, nababaliwala yung mga lalaki at kahit yung mga LGBT. At minsan din, inaakala na para-paraho lang ang pangailangan ng bawat kababaihan or ng bawat genders without considering other factors. So for example, ang Catholic wife ba ay pareho yung pangangailangan sa Muslim na wife? Yung mga babae na nasa city, pareho ba yung pangangailangan sa mga babae na nasa rural communities? Of course not. Magkapareho man sila na babae, magkaiba pa rin ang kanilang pangangailangan at kagustuhan dahil nga iba rin ang kanilang kinagawian or cultures at yung, kanilang, yung lugar na kanilang kinalakihan. So ganoon din sa mga lalaki at sa LGBT. Iba-iba ang pangangailangan ng bawat gender. 
So, para magkaroon ng gender development, kailangan maging fair muna sa lahat ng gender at include ang lahat ng gender, even yung mga LGBT. Tapos, kailangan din na in general yung pag-address ng specific needs. Dapat alam kung ano ang pangangailangan ng bawat isa para magkaroon ng gender empowerment, gender equality, at gender equity.